Yes. Pretty interesting. And the subject matter was people were sitting in this cave. And as and they were looking at the shadows on the wall of the cave as people were walking by. And they were fixated on those shadows. And those shadows became reality to them. They never went to the mouth of the cave to see who was walking by or to engage them. They were philosophizing. Well, you know, the same thing happens today, folks. People focus on the shadows of life. They sit in darkness, and they never come out to see what's really going on. They, like the people in uh, the cave, they're looking at shadows, something that's to, become, to come. The world lives in darkness. And the world is afraid to come out into the light. Why? Because they're blinded. You see, what they think is truth is really false. And to come out into the light might cause them a conflict, inner conflict. Well, today I tell you something. We were going to, what we're going to talk about today is a very important part of our spiritual walk in life. And that is patience. Patience will help you endure the trials, the difficulties that you face in life. I might remind you, Scripture sometimes is misread. And that is, you do not learn patience in endurance. In trials, you do not learn patience. You are given patience by the Holy Spirit to endure and to make it through whatever difficulties you might be facing. Now that may be contrary to what you've heard in the past, but we will show you. So today we're going to study why patience is an important attribute to our spiritual walk with Christ. Living to please others, Romans 5, I mean Romans 15, verses 3 through 6. For even Christ didn't live to please himself. As the scripture says, the insults of those who insult you, O God, have fallen on me. How many times throughout scripture have we seen the Pharisees calling who? Christ, a false prophet. They said he had a demon. They said that he couldn't call himself um, the Son of God. That was blasphemous in their eyes. And it continues today. You know, we may not think, think this, but when we decide that we're going to change um, <clears throat> the ideology that God was the one that established this nation, and we turn around and we want to say, no, he didn't, don't we think we might be blaspheming God? And yet, the fact of the matter is that our president has set himself higher than the living God. Well, that's a fact. Such things were written in Scripture long ago to what? To teach us. Now, we don't live under the Old Covenant. We live under the New Covenant. But we can still learn from the Old Covenant. We don't just throw it out. Uh, 
And these scriptures give us hope. They give us encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. See, we have to wait patiently. God has his plan in store. And oftentimes people say, well, why can't we get this thing over with? I'll show you the reason why later on as we get towards the end of the sermon. Why? In verse 5, May God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for the followers of Christ Jesus. You know, Paul had to deal a lot with the personalities of the people he was teaching. They would fight with one another. Some thought they were better than others. And there was a constant bickering going on. Even amongst the women. And Paul told them, he said, look, this patience that the Holy Spirit has given you is to help you to get along with one another. And what is the outcome that we're looking for? In verse 6 we see that. Then all of you can join together with one voice. You're in harmony. You're in peace with one another. You have to fight with one another. You can be patient with one another. Patience is teaching us how to get along with one another. Then we can all join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When someone is anointed to be a pastor of a church, the congregation takes part in it. And the person who's presiding over the ceremony will ask the congregation, all of you, will you support this individual? And what is the reason for that? I see it as twofold. Number one, you're going to have to check your attitude towards the person who's being put in that pastorship position. Can I support this individual? And if you can't for some reason, then you take that up with the powers to be. The point being is <clears throat> that the reason why that question is asked is to see what the support of the congregation is. Whether it be one person, two person, whatever the case might be. It might also be an opportunity for a person to check their attitude and ask God, Holy Spirit, to give them patience to give them wisdom to learn how they might be able to to uh, work with that pastor. But you know something? If there's discord amongst the congregation, and I think this is so important, how then can we come with one voice before the living God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not saying that's here, but I see that in a lot of churches where discord runs amok. Freedom in Christ. Galatians 5, 19 through 23. All right. Do you understand, do we understand 
that we cannot sin unless we're thinking about sin. If we think about sin, then we can we can sin. Because where does it start? It starts with the thoughts. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful desires, idolatry, sorcery, yeah, even sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, and other sins like these. You know a lot of people don't think that's a sin, to be hostile, to be quarreling, to be jealous. There's a lot of jealousy that goes around. Anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. People say, well, but how about murderers? You know, murderers if they repented, they've been saved. Here's the problem. A lot of people don't understand what grace is really about. Grace is holiness. Well, God had his son come down here and put him on the cross. And he died for all my sins. Therefore, there's nothing I need to do. I'm covered. You don't understand what the cross and what grace is really all about. Simply put, grace is holiness. Other people will say, okay, But sometimes you have to talk about truth. Let's talk about truth. Wait a minute. Scripture says Christ is truth. When we talk about Christ, we're talking about truth. When we talk about Christ, we're talking about grace. And what he is, what I'm talking about, putting them together, And what we have is a package. And what we learn is patience. We learn to be patient. And where does that patience come from? It comes from the Holy Spirit. So that we can endure whatever trials we might be confronted with. Now, where did you get the idea that that Jesus, that the the Holy Spirit gives us a, gives us patience. It's one of the fruits, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives: love at the very top, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Oh, I would think that would be talking about truth, wouldn't you? But some today would say, well, I'm, I am covered and that uh, I don't have to do anything. It's all been done through the death of Christ. Remember, Christ asked his disciples, just prior to his being crucified, I wish that you had the joy that I have. He had a very close relationship with his father. 
And he had all these fruits. And there is no law, no law against some of the fruits that I mentioned. Now Paul, talking to Colossians, he gives thanks and he prays for them. In verse 9, So we have not stopped praying for you since we have first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. And part of that is if we have wisdom, which then imparts to us patience, we are then able to endure As Paul points out. Verse 10. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. And your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. When a person says to you. Or me. That. They have been saved. And then you take a look at their behavior. The only choice you, the only, well, the only thing you can really say is that they don't understand what grace is all about. They don't understand that the Holy Spirit imparts wisdom to you in understanding. Understanding what Scripture is telling us. Understanding why Scripture is promising. And you cannot honor the Lord if you're out doing your thing. It does not bring honor to God. It does not bring honor to anybody. All it does is destroy you. And then people think that they are free. It very plainly says the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. Honoring and pleasing Him. Getting along with one another. Being there to encourage one another. Being patient with one another. And your lives will produce good fruit. And we learn that with patience. In verse 11, Paul says, We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy. The Holy Spirit gives us power. And some people will say, well, I can't help myself. I was brought up this way. That's not an excuse. We have the power to change. We have the Holy Spirit who guides us and directs us. And God, and the Holy Spirit seeks godly wisdom to impart upon us. In 
And what is, through patience, we learn that we are have been enabled to share the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in light. People who say that they are saved and their behavior hasn't changed live in a world of darkness. You know, there are simple people. They believe anything that they hear. And the problem is, because they don't come out of their darkness and into the light to prove things, they become deceived. Even when you tell them the truth. And verse 13. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. And what did he do in verse 4? He purchased our freedom. We were in captivity to the kingdom of darkness. And in that process, forgave our sins. So we don't think about sin. God sees us as being holy. But we have to do something. We have to do His will. We just can't sit back and say, well, I can do everything and anything. I can cheat, I can lie, I can steal. And then think that that's okay? No, it's not. Our freedom was purchased. I didn't learn patience during this whole process I went through for four months. Patience is what helped me to endure it. Patience is what allowed me to think wisely rather than rash acts. Some people would say, okay, I'm just going to stop taking all my medication. Sure, you can do that. You got the freedom to do that. People do it all the time. They make themselves sicker. God gives us wisdom. Okay, this is your situation. Be patient. This will get resolved. And it did. And now, I don't take any of those medications anymore. I still do dialysis. But the medication that was causing the trouble, we had to figure out which ones they were. And we found out there was a combination of them all. So there's just some medication I can't take anymore. Even in death. Even in death. We watched our dear friend hang on for quite a while. But patience is what helps. If you don't mind my saying this, patience is what helps you get through it. It was, it was doable. Pardon? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And there's sometimes a reason why God doesn't take a person right away. 
Some people die quicker than other people do. But I think from all of it, our patience helps us understand the suffering that Linda went through. And you went through it with her. Paul talks to Timothy. Second Timothy chapter three verses ten. Now Timothy, a young man, he was being apparently rudely treated by some of those who didn't believe the teachings. And so Paul says to Timothy, but you, Timothy, certainly know what I teach. You understand what I teach. And you know how I live. And what my purpose in life is. You know my faith. You know my patience. My love and my endurance. He went through persecution at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra. Put in prison, beaten, stoned, and yet God, with his patience, Paul endured it all. Paul gives Christ gives God the, the uh, credit. He says, the Lord rescued me from all of it. So we see in verse 12, and yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil people and impostors will flourish. They will deceive, and they themselves will be deceived. So what he is teaching, what he is telling uh, Timothy, he said, you are to continue and be patient. And I'm not going to go to the church and tell them that they need to respect you. You have known the scriptures from your the, from the youth. And they will respect you by you showing them respect. We move on to Titus. As for you, Titus, Promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. In other words, you can't teach and preach one thing and live another way. Can't be done. So you to reflect the kind of wholesome teaching. Teach the older man to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect, and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with what? Love and patience. Love and patience. We move down to James 5.17, verses, uh, I mean, chapter 5, verse 7 through 11. Patience and endurance. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient. As you wait for the Lord's return, we look, we consider the farmers. They wait for the spring rains and the fall rains that they might have a good harvest. And so we must be patient. We must not 
be saying, my Lord delays his coming. We're told not to grumble about each other. For if we do, we'll be judged. And the judge is standing at the door. So if we look for examples of patience, how about Job? And I always have to say that because I think it's funny in a way. And you're talking about his wife. This is, why don't you just curse God get it over with? That was great support. Job is an, is an example. What about Joseph? Being cast in prison for something he didn't, he didn't do. What about David? The suffering he went through. Being chased by Saul, who wanted to kill him. Patience. So there's plenty of examples in the Bible about patience. Second Peter three, fourteen through fifteen. Peter says, and so, my dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to live peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And in verse 15, and remember our Lord's patience. For the Lord gives people time to be saved. So these are some of the scriptures that have gone through to pull out that patience is a virtue and to get us through any ordeal we might be confronted with. Almighty God, our blessed Father, who teaches us through the Holy Spirit how we are to live our lives that they might be more approving to you, Father. You are such a loving God, a patient God. And the more we get to know you, the more patient we be, we realize, just the more patient we realize how much patience you have with us. And Father, if you have patience with us, then we need to have patience with everybody else. Even those who may hate us. Even those who cannot stand being around us. But, Father, through our example, that can be overcome. We can win our enemies over. Showing them love, showing them patience. Being kind to them. Just because sometimes they may not show love towards us does not mean that we cannot show love towards them. Love wins over. And finally, Father, we look at your plan it is so clear. The love is so much more powerful than hatred. So when we are set free, from the kingdom of darkness we are released to the kingdom of light 
And through patience, we can endure. And through patience, we can love. And through patience, we can be kind. And through patience, we can be pleasing to you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.